Okay, so you have to hold a snake. Listen, I think holding snakes is something that should be celebrated, but let's be honest, it's not something they teach you how to do in school. And it's definitely not the same as picking up a cat or a dog. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the proper way to hold and handle a snake. Hey guys, I'm Erin and on this channel we dig into reptile education for better care and conservation. And in this video we're going to be discussing how to handle snakes because it isn't something that comes naturally to everybody. In fact, it's something that you really do have to learn. While I seem super confident handling snakes now, when I first started, I was not. I had no idea what I was doing because snakes are kind of awkward to hold. They're not like picking up dogs where you can just like kind of hoist it up and hold it between the legs because they've got no legs. They're long, they're solid, you know, these are muscular animals, but they're also made up of bones and what. So you have to make sure that you're holding them properly so that you uh, avoid any potentially negative interactions with them yourself and so that you avoid causing the snake harm. Now, before I show you the proper way to handle snakes, I want you to do two things for me. I want you to hit that subscribe button because you don't wanna miss any videos here. You wanna be part of the Moonlit Jungle family, right? I also want you to hit that notification bell so that you never miss a video. We're putting new videos out every single Thursday on Reptile education and you can learn about amazing animals like this one. Now for this video, I have decided to bring Zephyr out again. I do have eight other snakes I could choose from, but Zephyr is such a good sport about like everything that he is just perfect for demonstrating proper handling. If you have yet to meet Zephyr, if this is your first time joining me, this is Zephyr. He is a banana ball python and he is actually just a golden retriever. Please do not tell my other snakes this, they will be jealous. And we can't have that kind of drama in our house, okay? I can't have that kind of drama again. All right, so a disclaimer here. The most important thing you need to know about handling snakes is that you should not be handling snakes that you don't know. Okay, I'm not talking about pet snakes. I'm talking about if you go out hiking and you come across a snake and you don't know what it is, don't pick it up. This is so important because accidents can happen if you don't know what kind of snakes are in your area. I always recommend that you learn as much as you can about the snakes that are native to your area before you go out and do things like herping. This video is gonna show you how to safely handle either a pet snake or a snake that you know. I don't want you to go out and pick up any like rattlesnakes or copperheads, okay? This is not for those animals. You've been warned. Now there are two ways I typically see people pick up snakes and those ways are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the first way is by grabbing behind the head. So typically when people follow the behind the head rule, they are hoping that they can avoid being bit by grabbing, you know, behind the bitey part. But here's the thing, <laughs> snakes are flexible. Oh, and smarter than I give them credit for. He just was like, no. Snakes are flexible. And if you grab behind a snake's head, they may feel like you are a predator that is going to eat them. Gross. This is one spaghetti noodle I have no interest in. But if they think that you're a predator and you're grabbing them behind the head, they're gonna do what they have to do to defend themselves and you're going to get a very pointy reminder of why you don't grab snakes behind the head, okay? Snakes will not naturally just try to bite you, but that can be really stressful for them. So you have to remember not to grab behind the head. The other way is by the tail. I am not gonna demonstrate this the proper way because, or, or the way that I see it done because grabbing a snake by the tail is bad for a few reasons, okay? So let me give you a little bit of snake anatomy 101 here. Uh, most people, when they think about a snake, they think head and then the rest of the body is the tail. This is not the case. Just this little portion back here, right here, is the tail, just that tiny little bit. So people will often grab by the tail so that they can be as far away from the, the pointy, pointy end as possible, right? This kind of implies that snakes are not the muscular creatures that they are. I want you to be really clear on this. This snake is not fat, okay? There's, this isn't just like squishy. Well, I'm using a little squishy. It's a little squishy. This isn't a, a, a chunky fat snake, this is muscle. These animals are strong animals to be, you know, tubes, but that means that the snake can just come up and again, you could have a, a pointy interaction with a snake. And I don't think anybody wants to have a pointy interaction with a snake. Nobody wants to get a snake bite. And I will be the first to tell you, snake bites are nothing. If you've been scratched by a cat, a snake bite's even chiller than that, but you still don't want it to happen. The other part about grabbing a snake by a tail is that it is really bad for their body. It puts a lot of stress on their joints because 
while they look like they're not made of much, while they look like they're just tubes, they have a very long spine. I once had someone ask me if snakes had bones because in their mind they were kind of the same as like a worm. Snakes do have bones. They have this long spine and when you are holding them by their tail, you put a lot of pressure on that spine and it's just really not good for the snake. So. You never, ever, ever pick a snake up by the tail. Not only is it not good for the snake, it's not good for you, and it's an all around unpleasant experience for both parties. So let's talk about what you can do to hold a snake, how you can properly hold a snake so that you have a good interaction with it. Now this is really geared towards smaller snakes or medium sized snakes. I'm talking about things like ball pythons, king snakes, uh, corn snakes, snakes like that. We're not talking about boa constrictors and reticulated pythons, which are larger bodied snakes. They require a different type of handling. The first thing that you wanna make sure that you do when you're handling a snake is you want to approach it with confidence. The last thing that you wanna do is be really jumpy with it because if you get jumpy with a snake, it might be concerned that you're about to try some funny business. It's gonna pick up on your energy here. It's gonna notice if you are nervous and flighty. So you want to be calm, you want to be confident, and you want to just confidently pick up the snake. That would mean just going in, grabbing the snake and lifting. Now you'll notice that I did this calmly. There was nothing like sudden, no like dive ambushing here because you don't ever want the snake to feel like you are hunting them. You want the snake to see you as just a, a really interesting part of their environment that is neither prey nor predator. So this is calm, confident moves. Now I told you that you shouldn't be picking up by the head or by the tail because it's not just unpleasant for you where it can end up being an unpleasant experience for you. It's not good for the snake. You need to be providing support to multiple points in the body. You want to make sure you're supporting different areas of the spine. So I'm going to show you with Zephyr here. I'm holding Zephyr a bit on the front end and a bit on the, the back end. I like to provide support like towards the midsection. That gives him some freedom to move his head around and that's kind of why he's all over the place right now. He's exploring, he's having fun. But I also provide that support at the end of his body as well so that he is just well spread out you know he's got that balance of weight throughout his body there's no point of real stress on his body now you'll notice that my pythons spend a lot of time like this pythons and snakes do like to wrap around things to provide support and balance that provides support in multiple places as you can see he's using my wrist to kind of wrap around with his upper the upper part of his body we also are supporting him right here and then right here, he's got a lot of support here so that there's no real stress on his spine, aside from what he's doing to himself right now. And that is another really important thing for you to take note of, is that I am not gripping him. I'm not forcing him into any position or anything like that. Now there may be cases if you are a snake owner that you'll have to really like, you know, hold your snake. Maybe you have a snake that ends up with like a sickness or you need to administer some sort of medication or you're taking your snake to the vet. Then a firmer grip is, is good, but you'd never want to be squeezing your snake. This is going to cause the snake a lot of stress. The other thing you don't want to do is really hold them in place. You want to allow a gentle grip. That way your snake has control of what they're doing. This is gonna allow the snake to feel a lot more confident, a lot more calm in the situation so that they know that they are not prey. Ultimately, your goal with holding a snake is to be able to hold a snake like this, open-handed so that they have control to explore the environment, but you still wanna be providing support to their body. This is something that does take practice. You may feel awkward the first time you do it. You may feel more comfortable having someone with experience helping you, but if you follow that technique of confidently approaching calm gentle movements you're gonna find that your interactions with snakes are much more positive so now that you know the safest or the most effective way or the best way to handle a snake I think there's one thing that you absolutely need to know to do and that is pay attention to the snakes cues it's not hard to tell when a snake is stressed out or scared you may see them doing some defensive displays but you want to pay attention to the snake that you're handling if the snake that you're handling is stressed out and not calming down it's best to let them be let them rest let them relax, even if it is a pet snake. But handling snakes should be a positive experience, and it can be for both you and the snake. Zephyr's just having a grand old time right now. He's just really enjoying himself.
Now, before we go any further, I want to know, have you handled a snake before? And what was that experience like? Let me know in the comments below. Snakes are so amazing and they're just so much fun to interact with. It's one of the reasons why I love snakes so much is that they are such amazing creatures to interact with. But if you want to learn more reasons why snakes are amazing, go ahead and click on the video that you see on your screen right now, where we're going to dig into some reasons why snakes are so important to our world. All right, guys, I'll see you over in that video. Bye.